Am I doing this topic to try to massage the algorithm? You better believe it. Here's five sexy shows you may have missed or forgotten about. Secret Diary of a Call Girl Secret Diary of a Call Girl is a British drama that first aired on ITV in September of 2007. Showtime originally planned to buy the rights to the show and remake it with American actors, but realized the original was great the way it was. So they just purchased the rights to air the series on the network. The show was based on the books by Belle de Jour. Belle de Jour is the pseudonym of researcher Brooke Magnati. She was born in the U.S. and moved to the U.K. to go to the University of Sheffield in England. While over there, she needed to make some money in a way that didn't interfere with her schoolwork. She became a prostitute and started a blog, Belle de Jour, Diary of a London Call Girl, in 2003. She worked as a London call girl for 14 months for 300 pounds an hour. Despite keeping her secret, she was able to sign a book deal and began to write articles for British newspapers. The only two people who knew her identity was her agent and her accountant. She was able to keep her identity secret for years until going public with it in 2009. Anyway, the show was based loosely on the first book, The Intimate Adventures of a London Call Girl. This series first aired on ITV on September 27, 2007. It later aired on Showtime in June of 2008. Billy Piper, who is previously best known as Rose Tyler in Doctor Who, played Hannah Bell Baxter. They followed the basics of the book, with Hannah taking a job as a high-end escort in London. Season 1 ran for 8 episodes. Each season that followed that also ran for 8 episodes so they could focus on the quality of the show instead of padding it out with needless subplots. The show was a hit on both ITV and Showtime and continued for four seasons. When it ended, it was due to the show having run its course. Most shows in the UK are only about two to three and sometimes four seasons. They end shows while they're still good instead of dragging them out. Look at something like The Office. Anyway, with Piper on the show as an executive producer, she announced at the end of season three that the fourth season would be the last. The show has appeared and disappeared on various streaming platforms. It's currently on Tubi and Video On Demand. It was released on DVD, but that seems to be out of print. That's just as well. They couldn't obtain the music rights for most of the series, and almost every song had to be replaced. The series had two remakes. In April of 2012, the Chilean network TVN released... The Secret Diary of a Professional. In March of 2015, there was a Dutch remake, Diary of a Call Girl. The show took an interesting look at being a London call girl. It didn't overly glamorize it. It showed how there were pros and cons to the job, as well as dangers. Still, it was done with a good bit of tongue-in-cheek British humor and that razor-sharp wit. I'm very high class. It's a fun show that has its ups and downs and Piper is absolutely perfect in the lead role. She breaks the fourth wall by talking to the audience, and you do feel the emotion she's going through over the course of the series. It's a bit more serious than pretty much the rest of the shows I'm going to be talking about. Speaking of, Hot Springs Hotel. Hot Springs Hotel is a 1997 adult comedy series. The show is about a brother and sister who inherit the Hot Springs Hotel, a hotel in Desert Hot Springs, California. Originally, the show was going to be about a beachside hotel, but the producer fell in love with a hotel in Desert Hot Springs, and so he reworked the scripts to make the show take place there instead. The series starred Sam Phillips, whose biggest role up to that point was Alchemy in Phantasm II. Her brother, Randy, is played by Robert Vitelli from the series Compromising Positions. The first season is the hijinks that goes on at the hotel. It usually revolves around some sort of misunderstanding, and Randy is often trying to have sex with one of the guests at the hotel. They're understaffed, and almost every time after Randy has sex with someone, he asks them if they can be the new bartender or hostess or whatever they need that week. The beautiful women say yes, and they join the cast of the show. The series premiered sometime in 1997. It lasted for one season with 15 episodes. The show is not available for streaming, and it was on DVD, but it's out of print. The episodes used to be on Daily Motion, but after they rebranded, they were all deleted. Aside from a few clips, this show isn't on YouTube. That shouldn't be any surprise, though. This series is about 90% nudity. Coed Confidential. Coed Confidential is a 2007 adult sitcom, one of the very few of its kind. 
It's also probably the best. Whereas Hot Springs Hotel had a few dumb jokes each episode, Coed Confidential had some genuinely funny comedic elements throughout the series. Coed Confidential is about a notorious fraternity house that gets turned into a coed residence for four new freshmen. The show largely revolves around the party animal James, his on again, off again girlfriend Ophelia, and the new students. The show premiered on November 2nd, 2007. While this is a show from the late 2000s, it feels like a 90s adult version of Animal House. While you would expect this to be nothing but bad jokes randomly stitched together to get to softcore scenes of people rubbing on each other, it really is more than that. The writing and humor is often genuinely funny. They also had ongoing plot lines and elements you wouldn't expect in something like this. It reminded me a bit of MTV's Undressed, only in this, they actually get undressed. The show was a part of Cinemax's After Dark block they were running at the time, where they brought in other original shows like Sin City Diaries, Lingerie, and Life on Top. Cinemax Late Night was often referred to as Skinemax, and by doing this, they were trying to own it. They even later referred to the block as Skin to the Max. The series had a mix of softcore and hardcore actors and actresses. Kevin Patrick, who played James, had really good comedic timing. He was like a less obnoxious stifler. If he was younger, I could have seen him in a bunch of teen sex comedy movies. Hannah Harper played Ophelia, and she was a good foil to James. She was incredibly attractive, and with her genuine English accent, she was a highly likable character. Larry, Karen, Zack, Ice Princess, and all the other co-stars that came and went over the series each brought something fun or funny to the show. Each episode was about 30 minutes, and while, yes, about half of that was softcore scenes, they did such a good job of intertwining them with the story that one didn't detract from the other. On top of that, you had music from one of my favorite underappreciated composers, the award-winning Herman Beeftink. Laugh at his name all you want, but the dude started doing scores for softcore programs and moved on to shows like Gilmore Girls, and movies like X-Men Origins Wolverine. The show also has an alt-rock Blink-182 sounding outro tune. The show was a breakout hit for the network and ran for four seasons with 52 episodes. The last episode aired on October 27, 2010. The show ran in reruns on the channel for quite a while afterwards. They often would take a group of episodes from each season, and re-release them as movies on the network. I've seen DVDs of the show, but I don't think it's ever officially been released. I think the DVDs are just pirated TV rips of the movies. It's not available for streaming, and aside from a few ads, it's not on YouTube. The show was available for streaming on Amazon Prime, but not anymore. Forbidden Science this is another show from Cinemax that was playing around with the idea of adult shows that weren't just naked people grinding on each other. Forbidden Science premiered on January 9, 2009. The foundation of the series was fairly impressive for this kind of show. Not at all what you would expect for a softcore TV series. It revolved around a company called Forever Innovations that had figured out cloning technology. They can take the memories of someone who died tragically and implant them into a new body, an exact replica of who they were before they died. The show covered all sorts of ethical problems with this in a way that you wouldn't expect for this kind of show. Like how there were people who don't even consider the clones human, even though they had all their previous memories and DNA. Really, if they cut out the sex and explored the concepts a little deeper, it probably would have been an award-winning program. The show did have a lot of wish fulfillment, with Noelle Dubois doing her best impersonation of Abby from NCIS, then later doing some cosplay of Gogo Yabari from Kill Bill. Some of the sex scenes are more uncomfortable than sexy. For example, early on in the show, there's an evil husband who's having sex with his mistress right next to his wife who's in a medically induced coma. The series ran for one season with 13 episodes. The last one aired on March 28th, 2009. The show did have an ending, but it was still left open just enough if they were able to get a season two. Not sure why the series ended, if it was low ratings, or if people just didn't want to think too much while watching their whacking programs. The show isn't available for streaming, but you can buy the series digitally on Amazon, or pick it up pretty cheap on DVD. Emmanuel in Space 
The original Emmanuel is a 1974 erotic French film that went on to be a massive success. The film ran in packed theaters in Paris for years. When released internationally, it was also a hit. It's said the film series has made well over half a billion dollars. Emmanuel was followed by numerous sequels and spin-offs, some official, some unofficial. However, one of the most notorious and, in my humble opinion, best spin-offs is Emmanuel in Space. Emmanuel in Space is a 1994 TV series very loosely based on the character of Emmanuel. It premiered in syndication sometime in 1994. This time, Emmanuel is played by Krista Allen. She's portraying the most beautiful woman on planet Earth and attracts the attention of a group of aliens that are trying to understand humans. So she joins them in space and teaches them all about sex. Whenever she has sex, the aliens can put on these headsets and feel whatever she's feeling. Then if she wants, she can take on the appearance of other women to show the aliens how men react to things like different bust sizes and whatnot. Emmanuel is so sexy, she turns the lead alien, Hafron, into a sex addict. He proceeds to travel with her around the world and seduces any woman he comes into contact with. However, over the series, he comes to realize that he is truly only in love with Emmanuel. What a show! This was an internationally funded project. The producer, Alan Siritsky, was born in New York, the son of French immigrants who fled to America to escape the Nazis. He was a producer on all the main series Emmanuel sequels, starting with two in 1975. He was the general manager of Paramount France when he acquired the American rights to the series and was able to make Emmanuel in Space for syndication in the U.S. Not including the unofficial spin-offs like Black Emmanuel, this was the first time the series was produced outside of France. Krista Allen had only been in Los Angeles for less than a month when she got the job. Her agent convinced her it'd be good for her career to play such a legendary character. So her first industry job had her completely naked in a glorious sexploitation series. It was 21 episodes of Emmanuel traveling around the world, and even through time, to have sex with a wide variety of attractive people. While she was later embarrassed about doing the series, it definitely got the actress a lot of attention. It helped her land parts on Married with Children, The X-Files, and she played the very famous lady in the elevator in Liar Liar. She later became a cast member on Baywatch. The show was released on DVD as a series of individual movies. Each movie was a re-edited mix of three TV episodes, making seven Emmanuel in Space movies. Some of the DVDs are out there, but they aren't cheap. The show is not available for streaming, at least not anywhere legally streaming. I say this with all sincerity. This is some very classy smut. Yes, it's softcore porn, but they use tons of really lovely stock footage and a variety of sets to make it all feel like they're really traveling around the world. Mix that in with some nicely shot scenes, which I obviously can't show you on here, and the whole thing just works on a higher level than something like, well, the numerous other softcore movies from the time. Although it's funny to see them using footage from Roger Corman's Battle Beyond the Stars in there. I guarantee Krista Allen made a lot of men and some women very happy with her appearance on the show. She is absolutely stunning. I really don't think the show would have been anywhere near as memorable if they cast someone else. Allen most likely doesn't know, or maybe she does, but there is a large group of dudes out there who were teenagers in 1994 and had a very special awakening due to the show. Emmanuel in Space is one of the all-time greats when it comes to late-night erotica. So that's five sexy shows. Let's hope the algorithm is properly fueled. I've got a huge episode dropping next week. All these shows are fun and from a very different time in the world. If you can catch them, I think they're worth a look. Just don't yell at me if your wife catches you mixing macaroni. Captain Havron, your internal pressure is rising precipitously.